This episode is brought to you by Brilliant. One of the most impactful results of the Industrial Revolution has been the mass adoption of a collection of core engineering features that, to this day, permeate almost every industry. Some of these derived components are very obvious, such as threaded fasteners and gear trains, but there are others that go mostly unnoticed due to their seemingly trivial nature. One example of such a mechanism can be found today as a critical element of both a coffee machine as well as a jet engine. This is the story of one of man's earliest sealing devices, the hose clamp. The earliest documented form of hose clamping emerged from ancient Greece around 500 BC in the form of oxhide and ox intestine hoses being reinforced and secured with hammered copper rings. These early hoses served as a flexible fluid conduit for transporting river water and were used for firefighting by stomping on them. Around the same time period, the first natural gas pipes were being created from bamboo by the Chinese, where it was used to boil salt water in order to make salt brine. These pipes were sealed onto each other with plant fibers wrapped tightly around the joints. By the first century AD, soft metal rings, leather straps, or plant fiber-based wrappings were commonly used for the sealing of water, oil, or natural gas, with hoses themselves being made from a broad range of organic materials, from canvas and hemp to leathers and intestines. By the early stages of the Industrial Revolution, the first rubber-lined cotton-webbed hose called gum hose would be patented in 1821. Natural rubber or gum dramatically increases the sealing characteristics and durability of hoses, though initially they were prone to environmental breakdown. By 1844, Charles Goodyear would patent his vulcanization process, rapidly leading to the commercialization of vulcanized rubber products, including all rubber hoses. The improved durability and flexibility of vulcanized rubber hoses made them suitable for more demanding applications, and they quickly found uses among a broad range of industries. Initially, hoses were primarily attached using threaded or latched brass couplers. Early techniques involved riveting the hose to a collar on the coupling body. This method was employed primarily with cotton-jacketed rubber hoses. As hose capacity increased, wire binding or seizing became prevalent. This process entailed sliding the hose over a long collar pipe piece of the coupling and securing it with multiple wraps of annealed copper wire. To enhance the seal, a trimmed leather piece is placed along the lap joint before binding the hose. The introduction of the expansion ring binding method would soon supersede wiring binding. Invented by Andrew J. Morse and Alexander Boyd, this innovative approach featured a coupling with an interior bowl into which the hose end was inserted. An expansion sleeve is then placed inside the joint and mechanically expanded, pressing the hose firmly against the coupling's exterior bowl, creating a robust and reliable connection. This method would form the basis for how many modern hose coupler designs work. While couplings work well, they require an entire system of fittings to be designed around their use. A more generalized method of hose attachment would soon emerge in the 1880s that used a simple mechanical mechanism to constrict a hose consistently and securely. Initially called a hose binder, the cotter type hose clamp employs a flat steel band with a saddle and a split pin. In this design, the belt is wound around the split pin to build tension, where friction locks it in its final use state. The hose binder was the first true modern hose clamp in that it allowed for a highly repeatable binding action that lent itself well to mass production and could easily be manufactured and adjusted for different hose sizes. They were also easily removed and reapplied without damaging the hose. Fundamentally, a hose clamp fulfills two design goals, sealing of the working fluid and mechanical attachment. In order to seal a hose to a mating pipe, an even pressure along the entire circumference is needed, with a clamping force matched to the working fluid and its operating pressure and no mating gaps. While conceptually this sounds simple, in practice the terminating ends of a circular wire or band-based tensioning mechanism 
creates a region of lower or uneven clamping force. The pressure of the working fluid and the surface quality and material properties of the mating pipe and the hose determine how much clamping pressure is needed for sealing and how much it can deviate from ideal circular clamping. For the purposes of mechanical attachment, a hose clamp works alongside a locking feature on the mating pipe, such as a single barb or a bead. They're typically placed on the hose behind the first ramp of a barb or behind the raised area of a bead. Both rely on the mechanical interferences of the sealing feature to prevent the clamp from sliding past it, as the working fluid's pressure applies a force on the connection. It's important to note that mechanical attachment is possible without a hose clamp with the use of multiple barbs or beads, though these tend to have limited pressure capacity, are destructive to the hose, and are not suitable for extended reuse. In 1896, a patent for a revolutionary type of hose clamp, known as a worm drive clamp or jubilee clip, was granted to Swedish inventor Knut Edwin Bergström. Worm drive clamps, categorized as type F hose clamps in modern SAE nomenclature, are made from a galvanized or stainless steel band with a special thread-like groove pattern cut into it. The loose end of the band slides into a small gap next to the screw, and when it is turned in one direction, it grabs onto the grooves in the band, pulling it tight around the hose, creating a seal. Turning the screw the other way loosens the band. This simple and easy to manufacture design allows for relatively high clamping forces when compared to previous techniques while being highly adaptable to different hose sizes and consistent in operation for use in mass production. The overlap of the band onto itself as it constricts also helps reduce the gap in clamping force created by the screw mechanism. It was also very serviceable, allowing for easy readjustment, removal, and reuse, all without damaging the hose. That same year, Bergstrom founded Almana Brand Retskopsafarin E. Bergstrom and Company, or ABA, to manufacture his worm gear clamps, creating an entirely new category of products known as circumferential clamps. Within 20 years, the emergence of entire industries based around the internal combustion engine, such as aviation and mass automobile production, would spur the development of new application-specific variants of ABA's original worm gear clamp concept. One of the first evolutions of ABA's clamp are categorized as Type B and D hose clamps. Created out of the need for a clamp that can handle higher fluid pressures while contending with vibration and heat cycling, these clamps have a flat band body that utilize a machine screw and an embedded square nut for the tightening mechanism. Much like a worm drive clamp, the screw position is tangential to the diameter. Because the nut engages the fastener's threads fully when compared to the partial engagement of a worm drive clamp, these clamps are far superior in clamping force and reliability of the connection, especially in harsh environments with heavy reuse of the clamp. The Type C hose clamp, also known as a tower clamp, is a variant of this concept that uses a bridge structure to position the machine screw and nut tightening mechanism perpendicular to the diameter. These are primarily used where clamp access is limited. While Type B, C, and D clamps are far superior in performance, they are less flexible in application than worm drive clamps and must be closer matched in construction and material choice to the intended hose size operating environment, and serviceability requirements. During World War II, automotive manufacturers sought out more efficient methods for clamping coolant hoses that seldom saw above one bar of pressure. By switching the band to a formed wire-based clamp, material and manufacturing costs were dramatically reduced. Designated as Type A hose clamps in modern specifications, or sometimes called wire hose clamps, these clamps employ a formed dual-body galvanized or stainless steel wire with a machine screw and an embedded trunnion nut for the tightening mechanism. While wire clamps are lightweight and cost around half that of band-based clamps to manufacture, their small contact surface area causes pinching and long-term damage to hoses, particularly when over-tightened. They're also less rigid, making them more prone to improper installation, especially after many reuses. During the 1940s, as thread-based hose clamp designs began to grow in variety, several key metrics were established to classify their use. These are specified by their applied screw torque as the free torque or the torque value when the clamp is tightened for complete revolutions of the screw or nut while in the free state, the durability torque 
which defines the maximum torque value applied to a clamp without evidence of deformation or excessive wear when tightening over a steel mandrel. The installation torque or the application torque, which specifies the recommended torque for installation of the clamp. This is generally expressed in terms of 50 to 75% of the rated durability torque for specific clamps and the ultimate torque, which is the torque value at which the clamp develops deformation to a degree that it cannot be reused or no longer achieves its intended use. While the automotive industry chased cost reduction in hose clamping, the aerospace industry of the mid-1940s sought higher performance in more extreme environments. One of the first high-performance variants was the V-band clamp or Marmon clamp. Developed in the early 1940s by Herbert Marx's Marmon Products Company, the clamps were initially designed for use in aerospace applications, particularly for securing rocket components and aircraft engine parts. Marmon clamps were even adapted to secure the Fat Man and Little Boy atomic bombs in the holes of their B-29 motherships. The primary purpose of V-band clamps is to join flanged connections quickly and securely, especially under high pressure and temperature operation and under intense vibration. Their design allows for rapid assembly and disassembly. A V-band clamp consists of three main components, two flanged rings with V-shaped outer edges and the flexible metal band with a matching V-shaped inner profile. When the band is tightened around the flanges, it forces them together, creating both radial and axial pressure. This dual direction force results in a tight uniform seal around the entire circumference of the joint. The clamp's band is typically made from high strength materials like stainless steel or inconel for durability and corrosion resistance. The V-shaped profile of the band and flanges is precisely engineered to distribute force evenly, minimizing stress concentrations and reducing the risk of leaks or failures. Most V-band clamps use a T-bolt or over-center latch mechanism for tightening, which allows for quicker installation and removal without special tools. Despite their strengths, V-band clamps do have limitations. They require precisely machined flanges to function correctly, which can increase overall system costs. Additionally, they may not be suitable for applications with extreme size variations due to thermal expansion, as this can affect the clamp's sealing ability. In recent years, V-band clamps have found new applications in other industries. In the automotive world, they are used in turbocharger installations and exhaust systems. They've also become popular in food and pharmaceutical industries for securing sanitary fittings due to their ability to create a smooth, crevice-free joint that's easy to clean. The T-bolt locking mechanism first used on V-Bank clamps would be migrated to standard band-based clamps in the 1950s, becoming a key feature of a new class of high-performance general-purpose hose clamps known as T-bolt hose clamps. Popularized in the 1970s by Breeze Industrial Products Corporation, these stainless steel band clamps are widely used in automotive, aerospace, and industrial applications where less costly standard hose and pipe connections are used. The T-shaped bolt allows for up to four times the clamping force than traditional hose clamps and with its robust band overlap provides highly uniform pressure around the entire circumference, creating a strong, reliable seal that easily withstand higher pressures and temperatures while maintaining easy installation and removal and excellent vibration resistance. Following World War II, the automotive industry's push to further reduce manufacturing costs led to the adoption of a new class of single-part hose clamps that aimed to not only reduce part manufacturing costs, but also assembly line installation time. The first of these was the spring hose clamp. Also known as constant tension clamps or designated as a type E clamp, spring hose clamps emerged as the solution for a quick install hose connection that provided a constant uniform pressure without the need for periodic retightening. They are designed to maintain their clamping force even as the hose material expands or contracts due to temperature changes or age. This self-adjusting feature makes them particularly useful on applications where consistent sealing is crucial, but access for maintenance might be limited. Designed specifically for the one bar region of pressure differentials that are found in engine coolant and vacuum rubber or silicone connections, they're made from a single piece of spring steel formed into a ring with protruding ears or tabs. The clamp's inner surface often feature ridges or serrations that grip the hose material, enhancing the seal and preventing slippage. Spring hose clamps are easily manufactured in various sizes to accommodate different hose diameters and can be reused multiple times without degrading the clamp or the hose. In light duty applications, such as small vacuum lines, they can even be formed from a single wire, further reducing cost. 
By 1951, Hans Odiger of Horgen, Switzerland, would invent a new style of single part hose clamp known as the single air clamp or the Odiger clamp. Categorized as a type J clamp, Odiger clamps consist of a thin band of stainless steel or galvanized steel formed into a ring. The distinguishing feature is one or more ears or protruding tabs on the band. These ears are mechanically deformed during installation, which tighten the clamp around the hose. Some are formed with dimples intended to provide a spring effect when the diameter of the hose or pipe contracts to expand due to thermal or mechanical effects. They also work well when subjected to tolerance variations in the mating components. When the air is compressed during installation, it creates tension in the band that is distributed uniformly. Installation of air clamps typically require a special tool, often called Odiger pliers, which compress the air to tighten the clamp. The installation process is quick and consistent and results in a very low profile, high force connection that is very well suited for use on an assembly line. Because of this tight control of clamping pressure, they are easy to adapt to pressures that supersede the capabilities of traditional spring clamps, such as pressurized fuel injection lines that see 3 to 4 bar in operation. Their low profile and design flexibility also makes them well suited for tight space high clamp force uses such as CV axle boots. Unlike spring clamps, air clamp connections are considered semi-permanent because once installed, they cannot be easily removed without destroying the clamp. This characteristic also makes them suited for tamper detection in industrial use cases. Over the years, variations on the original air clamp design have been developed. Type TE two ear clamps, for instance, offer more precise adjustability and are often used in applications requiring a specific torque. Type SEC stepless air clamps, introduced in the 1990s, feature a smooth, stepless inner surface that provides an even more uniform seal around the entire circumference of the hose. Some are manufactured with preformed ears for easier installation in hard to reach areas, while other manufacturers have developed air clamps with visual indicators to confirm proper installation tension. By the 1990s, metal hose clamps were once again a target of cost reduction efforts by automotive manufacturers, with the introduction of the use of plastics in critical engine components. This shift was primarily driven by cost savings as plastic fittings could be manufactured cheaply and allow for more complex designs that could integrate multiple functions and connections into a single part, all while optimizing the component for the assembly process. Plastic fittings in automotive applications are typically made from high-performance thermoplastics such as polyamide, polyoxymethylene, and polythalamide. The design of these fittings also incorporates features that were difficult or expensive to achieve with metal, such as integrated sensors, quick connect mechanisms, and complex internal flow paths. Fundamentally, plastic fittings form a tight seal with minimal clamping force by relying on elastomeric o-rings or gaskets in conjunction with integrated locking mechanisms such as snap-fit clasps that utilize thin sections of plastic that act as a flexible joint, twist-to-lock connections, or low force locking clips. This approach allows for a more forgiving, toolless, single action assembly process that can accommodate greater manufacturing tolerances compared to pipe and hose sealing. The manufacturing process for plastic fittings typically involves injection molding, which allows for high volume production with consistent quality. This process is generally more energy efficient and cost effective than metal forming and machining processes used for traditional clamps and fittings. Additionally, plastic components often require less secondary processing, such as deburring or surface finishing, further reducing production costs. By the mid-2000s, plastics have been aggressively adopted by the industry, though they suffer from long-term durability issues, particularly in high-temperature environments near the engine. This has led to the development of more advanced materials and design techniques to improve heat resistance and long-term reliability such as the use of reinforced plastics or hybrid metal plastic designs for applications requiring higher strength or temperature resistance. Despite these attempts, the inherent effort needed to make these parts as durable as their metal counterparts come with the implication of a design-to-fail methodology from car manufacturers in the pursuit of cost savings. While in concept plastic fittings contribute to improved fuel efficiency through weight reduction, concerns about the recyclability and end-of-life disposal of these components have led to increased focus on designing for disassembly and using more easily recycled plastics. Some manufacturers are exploring bio-based plastics as a more sustainable alternative to petroleum-based polymers, though to date this has been met with durability issues.
Despite the problems associated with plastic fittings, the automotive industry has fully embraced it, with the hopes of eliminating the simple component that was once foundational to the success of the internal combustion engine. In manufacturing, sometimes components evolve based on their cost-performance relationship. Hose coupling is a perfect example of a problem that has seen dramatic changes in the pursuit of accomplishing a task with the least amount of material and assembly possible. Behind this refinement requires a meticulous understanding of design, testing, data modeling, and analysis. And a great way to dive right into mastering your understanding of data modeling is Brilliant. Brilliant is where you discover the thrill of learning with thousands of captivating interactive lessons in math, data analysis, programming, and AI designed to unleash your potential and transform you into a confident problem solver. Brilliant is an innovative learning platform that stands out for its use of a first principles approach that enables you to build a solid foundation of understanding. Each lesson is brimming with interactive problem solving exercises, allowing you to actively engage with concepts. This technique has been shown to be six times more effective than simply viewing lecture videos. Moreover, all of Brilliant's content is developed by a distinguished team of award-winning educators, researchers, and industry experts from prestigious institutions such as MIT, Caltech, Duke, and renowned companies like Microsoft and Google. Brilliant immerses you in active problem solving from the start because truly learning a concept requires more than just watching and memorizing. You need to experience it. By engaging in hands-on learning, you'll not only build real-world knowledge on specific topics, but also develop critical thinking skills that make you a better thinker overall. Investing in daily learning is crucial for personal and professional growth and Brilliant makes it easy and enjoyable. With engaging bite-sized lessons that fit seamlessly into your schedule, you can build genuine knowledge in just minutes a day. Say goodbye to mindless scrolling and hello to more fulfilling ways of spending your free time. A great starting point I highly recommend is Brilliant's Exploring Data Visually course. In this series of lessons, you'll learn to combine information from multiple sources to make great decisions using data modeling and solid visualization and analysis techniques based on a strong mathematical foundation. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org forward slash new mind or click on the link in the description below. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription.